Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo, and in this video, I want to talk about palindromes. Palindrome is a buzzword on the Nigerian Excel users Telegram group. What does it mean exactly? A palindrome is a word or phrase that spells the same when spelled backwards. Meaning, whether you spell from left to right or right to left, it remains the same. Example. Mom, A B A, Abba. That's a place in Nigeria. Re left to right, right to left doesn't really matter. So, what we really need to be able to do is, once we have a string, we need to be able to reverse it. Once we can reverse it and compare that with the original string, if they are the same, you know, then you have a palindrome. You might need to include things like lower upper function just to make sure that they are in the same case. But just equating them would do a non-case sensitive, um, you know, comparison, and that should work. But we'll get into all that as um, as we go on. The three functions we we'll need to pull this off are uh, text join, which you know is like a glue concatenate, bring everything together. We need mid. Mid allows you to extract, you know, individual characters from a string, and we'll need the sequence function, which allows you to create a sequence of, you know, numbers. Well, depending on, you know, what your objective is, but I think as we get in, you would get a better hang of it. So let's start off from the mid function. The mid, you can pick the string or the text, start norm. If you start from character one and you pick one character, obviously it means you're picking the first character. You start from character one and you pick only one character, M. If you change your start number to two, then you pick A. If you change it to three, you can already guess what it's going to be. It's going to be what? D. Meaning that for this case of madam where I have five characters, if I can somehow create a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, rather than picking each one differently the way I've done now, if I can create a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, then I can see all of them at once. Okay? So how do I create that sequence of one, two, three, four, five? I already said it. Sequence. So you need the sequence function. The sequence function, you can just give it say in this case five rows is going to default everything and start from um, one and end at five okay so it means that once i put this in here rather than one two three i just put sequence and i say five i'm just careful to press enter because of the way things work in office 365 so you can see that i have all my individual elements m a d a m so this is the trick to extracting individual characters right but now we need something different because i don't need a sequence of one two three four five for me to reverse it i need five four three two one meaning that the fifth character here will become the first character the fourth character will become the second and so on so i need to create a sequence of what five four three two one so how can we do that? We can still use the sequence function, but we just need to be a little more creative. Yes, we need five rows because we know we need five elements. For the columns, I can default this, leave it, it's default to one, but let me explicitly put one there. For my stats, now this is where you want your string to start from. What should be the first number in your sequence? I want it to be five. What's my step? That's the difference between, you know, um, character two and character one, number two, number one. In this case, I do minus one, right? So that it starts from five, it goes down to four, three, two. It can keep going, but because you've already said that it's going to be in five rows, it will limit it to five, you know, values. So let's evaluate that. So you see, we have our five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So once we put that five, four, three, two, one into this expression here, you know, we should be fine. So we take out this one, which does it from left to right or incrementing, and then we put our new one in there. So let's evaluate this. I keep evaluating as I go. That's the way I see what's going on. You can see that your 
lowercase m, which is the fifth character, is now the first a d a m. So we've successfully done that, the reversal. The only thing we need at this point is just um, to glue them together because the way they are now, they are existing as individual elements. But we need to bring them together, and that's where the text join comes in. So we have the text join. The first thing is the delimiter. We just want to glue them together that way with nothing in between them. So I don't need this. For the um, ignore empty cells, I can ignore that because it's not applicable in this case. And then I close my brackets. Okay. Right. That's how it will work. The only thing we need to change here now is that what we've done is we've had coded the five so we need to change that five to the length of this string right so that as you move from cell to cell it adjusts itself accordingly as you can see now it's only picking five characters for all of them so rather than five for this we just need to say what len a2 and these other five too we change it to what len a2 Let's go. Okay, so once you have this now, you can then test. You can do a simple test. You can just test is this equals to this true? Okay, there will be some tricky ones in there. I know this was one of the very controversial dates when it came. Oh, okay, is it a palindrome? Is it not a palindrome? Is a palindrome in all date formats, whether day, month, year? year month day month day year, and all that but yes you can see truly truly it is a palindrome the only one you have issues with here uh you know the numbers right because these numbers are exactly the same but what's the difference the difference is that one is seen as what string one is seen as what a number so this is seen as a number this is seen as a string and that's the reason why it's seen you know they are not the same if you did something like this just change this to lower you know of course once you use lower which is obviously for text it will convert that number into text and test with lower this right okay that fixes that the others are fine you can you know take that up if you want and that's true you could also have maybe used you know like uh, maybe the value function something to test that you know but the key thing here is that you just need to create a sequence that reverses the order from one to n to n to one you know it just does it in the reverse and once you can get all the individual pieces together using the mid function you can then use text join to glue them all together the other Thing that you know I, I was going to say is that I like to use formulas you know a lot of times you know just to keep the brain you know maybe active if you may some mental calisthenics but in Excel with the new features you have you could probably attempt to do this with the flash field because somebody is reading would be in the comment section saying well, why do you have to do this when we can use flash field so how do you use flash field you just give it a pattern and you expect it to figure out the rest so i can give it this pattern but you'll see some of the problems that we may face i've given it madam and then i press ctrl e which is the shortcut for flash field now you see that it isn't doing it correctly it's seen a pattern but it's seen a totally different pattern what it's seen is that i'm picking four characters and then the fifth character is always the same as the first, but just that it's capitalized. So you can see it picks the first four here, T-U-S-S, then it capitalizes the T again. It does the same for ladder, but that's not the pattern. So for, for flash field, the first you know, example you give it, or the first set of examples you give it must be representative of your data. 
so that he gets it right. Meaning that if you have some examples that are like 12 characters or 14 characters long, don't use the one or four characters to then set the example because it's not likely you're going to get it. If you then try with something like two sounds, so let me try and use two sounds and write two sounds backwards. D-U-A-S-S-U-T. -S -S I'm just capitalizing. I might not need to. If I change the case to it, it would adjust itself, you know. And let's assume I want to work with this as the pattern and then do control E. You can see that, you know, this does a better job because two sound being a little longer, he was able to see that, okay, this guy is actually reversing the string. But the madam thing, because of the M and ending with M, he got confused thinking like you were actually repeating the same character. So, you know, it's, it's tricky. You just have to know what example to use first. The way I kind of set it up here was like, I will first of all go with the longest string I have. Like if I put that T A T T A R R A T T A T. Now by the time I do this, it will most likely know that oh, this is a reversal, maybe. <laughs> and then, you know, go ahead and give me this. And then I can just check is it a palindrome or is it a palindrome? So we're just to throw that out there, you could also do it that way. But it's nice to see it, you know, done in this way. So this way we're gonna end this video. If you like what you see. You can hit the like button or you can subscribe to the channel excel moments like i always say if you can think it excel can do it i'm out